to Campfire Wisdom. Grab a seat around the fire and tell us your story. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Campfire Wisdom. I'm sitting here in a rather different environment from what we might consider campfire. I'm actually in the middle of a busy shopping mall outdoor food court. Last night, I slept terribly. My mind was racing about what I want to do with my episodes, how I'm going to cut it, how I'm going to piece it together, how I'm going to build, you know, this and do that and what's the next step and all this kind of stuff. And what I quickly realized is that none of that really matters. All that really matters is just, you know, sharing something that you're passionate about. And obviously for me, that's getting outside and being outdoors and whatnot and, and the the joy that you can get from just taking a little bit of time and slowing down. And I think the reason I did want to sit down here is just to kind of show you that dichotomy, that fact that we can be in the middle of the madness like I am right now, but then you can also go to a place where you can escape all that. So having the, that balance for yourself is what it's all about. Because the truth is you can't escape everything all the time that's just not healthy you need to have those moments when you can actually take some of that busyness some of that overload from your daily life and then maybe digest it in an environment where there's less noise so I think that's something that uh, that I've been thinking a lot about and why it occasionally leads to those sleepless nights so I'm sitting out here on my lunch break trying to find the time to squeeze in an introduction when in truth, you don't need an introduction. My buddy Nick sent me a message and uh, yeah, take a listen. Gregoria of the Studsy Kin, this is Nick Gagnon reaching out to you and Campfire Wisdom. I'm about a week removed from our camping trip up at McGill and I just wish I was back there. You can probably hear the cars and the traffic. I'm out front of my office building and I'm back in it, but uh, it makes you appreciate those times even more. I can speak for Marion and myself when I say that we had an incredible time and we're so happy for you in Gisla and everything that uh, transpired prior to us getting there. I mean, to say we're excited is an understatement and just what a special time. Uh, What was so cool about that trip is that I think there were mics and Zooms floating around, but I I completely forgot. I mean, I was just in the moment, and that's uh, the biggest compliment you can give somebody who is hosting a camping trip. So that's where I stand, man. I had an incredible time, and the only thing better than eating s'mores out in the woods is going to be listening to myself on your podcast eating said s'mores so I can relive it again. Uh, I guess I just can't wait for the next trip. All right. Miss you. Love you. Can't wait to hang out soon. And can't wait to hear the new episode. That one with uh, you and Geese was incredible. Peace. So, with that in mind, sit back, relax, and enjoy Camp McGill Part 1. I was telling them that I was recording with my buddy Marlon. And it just sounded good just kind of getting some of the makes it like you're almost at the campsite with us. That guy seemed cool. He was cool. His friend from work? Yeah. Nice. Cool guy. Did you like his story about the spiders? Yeah. Right? What an interesting... Get you one? Are you sure? Yeah. Don't tell you? Well, it's not, it's not really scary, but as a kid growing up in the Philippines, he would capture spiders in the jungle and then put them in a matchbox. Oh, wow. And then he would... They would fight them at the end of the week and for pogs, like, and they would, be, it would pogs? be like gambling. Yeah. Like these young yeah. boys would be like, Spider my spider's going to win. So then That's they would set up so two sticks, or one stick, sorry, two sticks up and then one stick between them, put them on each end, and they would just be so hungry because they would be in the box for a week. Oh just my fight gosh. Each other. Oh shit. Wow. Oh. Uh, you just made them cam- like cannibalize each other? Pretty much. Damn. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. To the death. Fight to the death. Who's hungry? 
Yeah, but I, I just thought I just got the visual of that, like the simplicity of life in that moment. Yeah. Because he's like, after school every day, he's like, I knew I just had to go find a big spider. And the more that I had, the better. I had to find the champion spider. Gosh. I remember one time I went over From to Pogs. the Stick Ross house, and Alex, Oliver, and Simon had all captured a they had a they had a fish tank, and then they all went to three separate ant hills collected as, as many ants as they could. That's insane. Brought the three ants, three different colonies of ants into the, as much as they could, into the aquarium. Yeah. But before they put them in there, they each painted the backs of their own ants a what? certain color. No, How? And they not. Really? Yeah, yeah, they just like tapped the back of the ant with the paintbrush. How big oh were the gosh. ants? They, they were just, you know, like black ants. And then they, because they, oh, wow. they wanted to see whose whose colony would outlive the, the, the others. Only the stick rots would do And it that. was just like, know, you guys, like I just want to play baseball, dude. What are you guys doing? You're painting ants? That's Ian's brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew, I knew. Okay, yeah. I knew right away. <laughs> Ian and Alex. Story started. I was like, yeah. I know who these guys are. Yeah. That's just the shit they did. I That's guarantee like, you, somewhere, someone has records of those. Yeah, sites. yeah. <laughs> that sounds like an epic battle, though. Not much was happening. I mean, the ants were just fucking living. It yeah. Wasn't, they, they thought they had some oh, crazy they fight? game going on. They didn't bite, huh? Like, attack each other? I don't know. Yeah. They, they probably like, hey, they buddy. Hey, buddy. Them? They didn't mind handling all those ants and not... We need to scoop up cops and shit. Yeah, but you get bit by ants. At least in the uh, ants in New Orleans and the South, they're fire ants. They yeah, tear same you apart. in Florida. Well, Nick, remember sometimes things want to happen so they catch like black widows and throw them in the tank too? Yeah, they, they did a lot of weird shit. Oh my gosh. My brother Ross captures black widows. He was doing like a widow battles. He's like, all right. Yeah, that is not, not no. for, for Trish. <laughs> that be my, where my brain goes. Uh-uh. Yeah, no, I played Barbies. I pretended that my circular driveway was like a speed skating track mm. and I would like go out in rollerblades and like try to just go around it by myself as fast as I could and try to do like this like this side oh, yeah. skating like yeah. Yeah. I thought I was so crossover. cool. Crossover? Oh when you learn that crossover. Oh, yeah. crossover yeah, yeah I thought it was like so such so a sick. badass. Yeah. It's such a badass right? I did guess my, my brothers would make fun of me. I used to catch mini frogs. We had these like oh, yeah. mini mini frogs. Yeah, we do those. Yeah, we and then Obviously lizards, we call lizards. Yeah. yeah, that I could get into. Lightning yeah, bugs. Frogs. Yeah. We'll catch lightning bugs like, in, like in Philly. Yeah. Lightning bugs are amazing, right? Yeah, you just see them and you want to get one. Mm -hmm. So cool. My aunt lived in Iowa and like it backed up to a forest. And it was like crazy. All the lightning bugs out there. Yeah. It was just like another sky. Mm -hmm. So cool. Kill some of them they have such a distinct smell. The lightning bugs? Yeah. I'll get it, honey. Yeah, do, do they? Yeah. Uh -huh. I guess I haven't been around them in so long. What? I'll get it. Really? I used to go to see my uh, godparents in Wisconsin and help them bale hay, and they had, it was the only time I would see lightning bugs. But, um, it, yeah, it's just crazy. There's a smell to it. It's mm -hmm. like a weird. Associate, like, dampness. Describe it. Like, dampness, yeah, okay. like, hay. Yeah. It's weird. But yeah. Oh, that's like. Almost I like an just iron that it was smell like about too. Terrain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what it is, but because it's I associate it with the hay smell. But mm. the hay's got crap that they put in that's there for the horses. Bad, huh? yeah, yeah, I want to see if we can see the stars. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. There they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people like true. tons of light at camp. I don't like. That. I don't like light. A lot of light. I like it if I'm trying to do something. Yeah, I went camping once, and I remember someone put a light, like, like a, massive, a point over there. Yeah, a like point over so there, many like lights. We were it's designing like a here fucking military perimeter. I was like, come on. Right. I don't know what. Or like even the, just the generator sound, like these guys that have the big oh, yeah. campsites with all this. <laughs> it's like, just go do that Like, in your are you digging then. for something? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Doing, it's just like an archaeological <laughs> dig. <laughs> They're literally running their heater or the AC in there or something. It's kind of funny, actually. Mm. Although it would be kind of nice, like not keep, like right now, I enjoy being outdoors and doing all this. But 
it would be nice to be like, oh man, I got a campfire and there's a fucking mattress right over there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There would yeah. be something special about that, you gotta admit. <laughs> Someday. Someday. You know those, uh, the air mattresses that are like a foot deep are really great too. As long as they don't like leak. I always have bad luck with those, man. You know, we yeah. had one that was good for like two trips and then like one night we went camping and we woke up in the middle of the night and we were both sunken in all the way to the ground. <laughs> oh like, my God. I couldn't even oh see God. her because it was just like all the air was stuck mm-hmm. in the space between us. So did the, did the log cabin there finally collapse or did you move it? It collapsed. Actually. It looked good. That was beautiful. Yeah. It did, yeah. It was really good. It actually collapsed in a perfect spot because then it's aiming the heat back at us. Yeah. Well, it's still yeah, been plenty of air like under it, too, so it's still it's burning a little hot. Warmer for me. Yeah? I feel like it's yeah. warmer now than it was before. Yeah, I think so. It's so getting a little of my shins. It's raging right now. Like, not on my face. It's like quintessential campfire right now. Yeah. The way it's positioned and everything. Awesome. It's like my TV's on that. Uh, on that. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, what is it about fire? Just looking at it, yeah. you can just get lost it's in it. Mesmerizing. Yeah. It is. It's just like so relaxing. Look at the stars. Which I think it's. Why. I think it feels like it's because you you connect back to like your ancestors because it's like we've been looking at fires for like millions of years, well, mm. not millions, but thousands of years, mm. hundreds of thousands. You know. How old is the oldest human? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of different carbon dating. I was wondering about the same. And I, I think they thought I, they found the oldest, 15, and then it keeps just changing. They keep finding older. Oh yeah, it was like a girl, like a little girl. Or Sally I saw her at the Natural History yeah. Museum. Yeah. yeah. How many? I feel I like they've she? gone back at least 000. thirty or forty thousand uh, years from like early man. Yeah. But yeah, like we keep on they're, finding like 30, frozen ones every like five years that are dating back even further. Go blade techie, I said go blade techie. That site kind of changed it. Mm. Every time I find a new Who knows what we'll find as the caps keep melting. Marion, was it with you that we tried to watch the Cave of Forgotten Dreams? That like I. I, wa- I feel like I did watch that one. And we, I think we were both like... Maybe, you know, we did try it. We were making fun of Warner Herzog. Yes, we did. Because we'd and never we, heard him before. Right. And now that I get him, I'm like, okay. Yeah, I yeah. know what to expect. That was a slow burn, though. That, yeah, that was a That was burn. a tough one to get through. I yeah. was like, oh, God. That's the same guy who did Grizzly Man. Yeah. Yeah, oh. he's, yeah he's done a he's lot. He's definitely like... I knew and that I want to take familiar. you to the cave. Yeah, I'm taking you down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you know, exactly like the right. Terminator a little it's bit. It's such you a know. great. He's a. It's a great voice, but some that one just oh, moved yeah. so slowly, <laughs> and then they really put like did. that music. Yeah. It was like that. It was like kind of that, it, like kind of tribally, mm. sort of music you were playing earlier. But then it was just like for a whole movie. So the whole time it was like, <laughs> wow, there's really. I feel really chill right now, but Rhythmic. also. How, how, how much longer is this movie? <laughs> yeah, you gotta really kind of push through that one. Yeah, that one was. I remember. He's got other ones that are bad. Yeah, he does. He does, and that one's not bad. Like it's a really interesting information. It's just like a very slow. Yeah. How, so I just looked it up on fire. How long ago? When do you think man first started using fire? And I didn't know this until I just looked it up. How so long is, ago? Yeah. When do you think man started? How many years ago? 5,000 years ago. 5,000? Yeah. Okay. 10,000. What's that going to say? 20,000. 10, 10 was my guess. 40,000. 50. So it just says that there's evidence that Homo erectus used fire 600,000 years ago. Oh my ago. god. I was going to say 500,000. Wow. Isn't that insane? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> how is there evidence? Well, it makes that? sense that there's, <laughs> we're still here. That's my take on it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's probably due to that alone. Fire, so. We survived because of fire. Yeah. And they evolved because of fire. Yeah. Well, I mean, fire, though, has, I mean, nothing has been discovered. Or, I mean, we use fire still for everything, to, like, melt stuff. It's still used to make, you know, as, like, a foundation to make pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, we would still it's be in the Stone Age food. without it. Keep us warm. That's it for now from Camp McGill. 
I will be releasing some more fireside chat in the near future and want to remind everybody about the hunt that is going to be happening here in less than a month. So for more information on that, you can check out my buddy's podcast, The Adult Onset Hunting Podcast with Nick Gagnon. So I will be joining the hunt as a uh, curiously conflicted observer. So again, that is going to be less than a month from now. There will be more discussion about that. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to have some of my fellow hunters on the podcast here in the very near future. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me and making this a very, 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 very fun time, very satisfying. And I hope to see you sometime soon outdoors. And until next time, have a great one. Bye-bye. Campfire Wisdom is brought to you from the hills of Rancho Cucamonga. We'd like to thank the men and women that protect our national parks and forests. You make this journey possible. Theme music by Sean Cromwell. Thank you.